We too are offered opportunities to witness for Christ, to be faithful and to show that we are too his disciples. We are his children. We are his beloved children. And how beautiful it is when the children act like their heavenly father. And so this is our calling as well. And I'm reminded that even during our times, there are opportunities to show and be great witnesses for Christ. I'm reminded of the horrific event that happened in Columbine probably well over 20 years now. And it is said that one of the students there, a young lady, she had gone to a summer camp. And it was there that she learned about Christ. And she gave her life over to him and was baptized. And so she had a new direction. She had a new vision, a new perspective. She was now walking with the Lord. And it was this young lady, a year after that summer camp, that one of the shooters pointed a gun at her and asked her a question. A high school fellow with a gun asking one question to a high school girl. He said, do you believe in God? And looking at the fellow with the gun, she said, yes. And as we know, he pulled the trigger. And this young lady witnessed for Christ, martyred, said, I believe in him, and I know very well this can end my life. If I say yes to God, it means death. And this young lady in Columbine was a witness for Christ. Would we do the same thing? Would we say yes to that answer, knowing that death was immediate? We're hoping that we will say yes if that situation arose. But I'm inclined to believe that that yes for us has to be a pattern of yeses to God. We can't be saying no, no, no to God and think that at that moment we'll say yes. It doesn't necessarily happen that way. There was a fellow who wrote a book. He was fascinated by people who would go in and, um, you know, run into a flaming house or during a train collision would somehow go and save people. They were people who were heroes. When everyone was running away from danger, these normal people were running into danger. And so they weren't medical personnel or police or anything. They were normal citizens that did heroic acts. So this author interviewed over a hundred people who did these type of things. And what he found in all 100 is that they were able to respond to that dramatic moment because their lives were such that they were always thinking about people. One of the fellows, he would volunteer and coach and umpire baseball. Another lady would go to nursing homes and volunteer. And the list went on and on. They were people of service. They were people of love. They were people that lived the family acronym. Forget about me, I love you. We can't do a singular heroic act of a grand scale if we're not doing smaller individual acts of love, of service, and of caring. So St. Irene and St. Ephraim two of our millions of saints that live these lives of faith to God. And when they came time for them to martyr to Christ, they were faithful and said, you can do whatever you want with my body. You cannot kill my soul. I will never deny Christ. So during these times, may we too strengthen our faith. May our faith become alive, activated, witnessing that this is my God. My God is good. My God is love. My God picks me up, he dusts me off, and he walks with me. My God is a good God, and he deserves my love and my allegiance. To his all-holy all name be glory forever and ever. Amen.